Welcome to the Trinity Force Podcast. Yo, it's that Triforce cast beaming straight to your home. Grab a beer so we know, pony drinking alone. Send an email, a quick tweet, just pick up the phone. Leave a message, hit the beep if you're a creep, watch your tone. Discuss the meta game, patch notes, whatever helps your stats most. Obi Pong Kenobi is your last hope to snatch gold. So grab your headphones and join in the fun. We'll try and force in some jokes and some cringeworthy puns. Yo, we can make it together, people. Trinity Force Podcast. Voice is second to none, but that's the end of the intro, it's time we've begun. Hey guys, welcome to Trinity Force Podcast. My name is Adam Ponophobia Cogswell, and you are listening to episode number 533. Joined by two really great guys this week, Vrail and Bears are here. Say hello. What's up? Hello. So, uh, Bears joined us last week. If you didn't, if you missed that episode, it is Bears Beats Battlestar Galactica, episode 532. You guys can check that on YouTube or on TrinityForceNetwork.com. If you're watching on YouTube, I do apologize for last week's uploads, uh, technical difficulties, but I have uh, obviously fixed those and made those sound pretty, so hopefully we won't have that happen again. Uh, also, one other apology to people listening to this in any form. Bears is going to have a new headset, uh, hopefully by the beginning of next week, and he will not sound like he's talking in the tin can, which seems to be always, almost always the issue when we bring somebody new on the show. Sound like a fucking tin can. Maybe I am just a robot. How would you know? That's right. Uh, I guess I'll never know, and then I guess we'll see what happens. So, uh, yeah, there's that's uh, there's Bears. He's he's our support main guy. He's coming on the show to help us talk about League of Legends. And speaking of League of Legends, we're gonna talk about that tonight. But not before we talk about Buddha Boxers, BuddhaBoxers dot com forward slash T Force. Use code Trinity Force for twenty percent off your order. Uh, just there are quality boxers to uh, wear around your you know butt and other areas and uh they keep you nice and they are excuse me they are quality bamboo boxers they are very inexpensive and amazing to wear my spiel this week sucks compared to last week but you guys already know about buddha boxers buddha boxers.com forward slash t-force use code trinity force for 20 percent off your entire order they are awesome uh as well every thursday battle arena has rejoined us for those of you who don't do not know what battle arena is it is a 5v5 guest game to make you better at league of legends join the looking for group in Discord. Also, go to our subreddit, T Force Network. Sign up every single week, and uh, we call it a day. You guys can go in there and play, get them casted. They'll get put out there in Twitch land, and uh, it'll be a good time. So, Battle Arena, look for that. Uh, other than that, we're always looking for more questions. Feedback at TrinityForcePodcast.com. Send us your questions. If you're a Patreon subscriber, send us your replays. Uh, a couple of new champion selects come into your inbox this month. I'm sending two out this month. I've just had a really tough time getting people around. Uh, that Masters talent player I had has dropped off the face of this earth. So, fuck you, guy. <laughs> you scared him off, man. Yeah, I scared him off, but he's like, I'm looking forward to doing this content. I'll see you then. And then I twiddle my thumbs. I sent a message. I said, I'll contact you again. Contact him. Nothing. I'm like, all right, fuck you. I give you one time. I'm not even, I'm not chasing your ass down. I don't care enough. The thing I've noticed is that um, stereotypes for specific champions go to the, uh, carry over to the players because I would assume talent players to kind of be assholes and the replies on the subreddit equal that um, as well as Draven players. <laughs> there will never be a Draven champion select unless somebody comes to me that like seems like they're okay guy because I think the last time I posted there was just two years ago. Uh, basically everyone was like fuck off! Oh you're fucking stupid! Oh I don't want to fucking do this! I'm like alright well, Was that when cool. Tyler 1 was at the height of his power though? <laughs> probably. Prob his toxic power? You, you hit him at the wrong time maybe now is a better time to, to reach into that. I mean world. I'm not sure it ever helps Draven mains are always toxic as fuck <laughs> They're always trying to get me to be a Draven because he like fits my play style of being hyper aggressive all the time, and I just can't catch axes for the life of me. Yeah, that's yeah, the, it's uh, it's real difficult. If you can't catch axes, then uh, Draven's not for, uh, <laughs> for you. No, I get in a team fight and there's too much going on and too much flashiness, and I'm too goddamn old at this point to be able to follow all the crazy shit that happens in a team fight. So I need something that's pretty simplistic, like counting to four. Like, because that is. Just stick with Jin. <laughs> Even though I wish Jin... Pe- Go ahead. No, sorry. I, I just hit the button on my um, stream deck, and I didn't mean to. I just wish more people could hear it, because my stream deck... I actually have... Here, I'm going to show you guys. So, I got to, I've showed you guys this last week, you right? You've showed can me you this so many times. I swear I've seen what this is thing that? multiple no, times. No, no, I know I know you guys... Can you see that? Yeah. No. Well, yeah, we see can. Like, see how it says, do you see how the Jin pictures? Yeah. See, like, if you click them, this is what... It's his lines one, two, three, four. <laughs> 
It's the... Jesus. <laughs> Uh, this is what I know I've showed you this. I've shown you this a hundred times. But I, I set that up because uh, when I was playing Jen, I would count to four by pressing the buttons. But anyway, that's not here or there. And the people listening to the podcast are like, what the fuck? Why does he keep talking about this? I'm trying to kill time. <laughs> well, if you're trying to kill time, public service announcement. Rageblade Jen's not a thing anymore. Oh, did they completely it's, nerf yeah. it? Right there. Oh, you get, you get, like, you get as much You get as much in like the whole full stack six <sighs> as you did used to get with like having one auto with it. So it's not worth getting. It's kind of sad. Same thing with Master Yi, right? Uh, I don't know. I haven't played with Master Yi. I just know I was watching a Jin who I rage played, and it was a really sad amount of AD that he was getting for <laughs> for the item. Yeah. Yeah. What was that a patch or two ago? They they changed that for Jin. I, the Master Yi as well. He won't get nearly as much AD as he previously had, so he can't super snowball. But he got Conqueror to make yeah, up I mean, for it. So. Yeah, he gets Conqueror and he still applies his true yeah. damage every other auto so it's probably not terrible on him boomer bust yeah sorry i have a cat right here and she's got some i think she has a tick or something on her to be honest with you i know it's great podcasting with you, but i feel i feel for my cat I have to go give the cat to my wife and say check this out anyway guys uh i have some discussion topics that we can talk about this week you can see them on the screen i wanted to talk about since the patch came out the new discussion uh new mana items and mid mid lane i've checked win rates and i've played a couple rounds in mid lane but it doesn't seem to be super impactful now i want Vrail or mid lane main to tell me how he feels about that so i haven't played a ton of mid lane since the patch i've kind of been taking a break from ranked i've just kind of been trolling around in normals playing whatever but i've played a few games of el cause and you don't you don't notice it at all early and i had I, you do notice a little bit later on the game if you're stuck out away from base for an extended amount of time you do notice that you're running out of mana a little quicker but it doesn't make a huge difference i would say especially since once uh those late game fights are coming around you normally have blue buff or you should anyway once it's that late the mid laner should always have blue buff unless maybe you have like an ezreal or something like that so i don't think that the uh i don't think the base stat changes were really that that huge didn't really affect too much yeah, I know you were super worried about it, and but between I've spent a lot of time now watching streams instead of being able to play, unfortunately. But uh, watching those and looking at the stat changes, kind of like what I said on that podcast, is I don't think with the stat changes it was going to be such a significant deal uh, when it came to lane only. But I think, as you said, once you start roaming around the map, or you're not able to. Um, you're just not able to sustain as well as you previously did or be able to pick up mana like on demand if you needed to, you know, by auto attacking a champion to get that extra, what, 15 mana or whatever it was. Auto attacking a champion, what? I meant auto attacking a minion. Like, you know, how oh, you, could, okay. you could last hit a minion to get that little extra mana to be able to engage a combo if your jungler came in or whatever it was, and that doesn't really yeah, happen yeah. as often as it, as it previously did or it can't happen anymore. Yeah, I don't think it was as... I think the tier changes are probably the bigger ones where it's more expensive and the Seraphs isn't as, as good. I think that's the bigger change. Just Did that indirectly nerf a lot, a few mid laners then with that tier change? I mean, just when the item itself is more expensive, it's going to be a nerf because you have to stick... Because the idea of ner uh, tier is you just want to back as soon as possible to go and buy it. So when right. you think about Old Lost Chapter, Old Lost Chapter like two iterations ago was 900 gold and it was a really easy back because you it's really easy to get 900 gold but tier is now 850 so it almost costs as much as um old lost chapter but it doesn't provide nearly as much in the early game so it's not nearly as good early if you because you have to stay around for a whole extra 100 gold so it's like an extra wave or so when you just want to get it and start stacking as quickly as possible so i think that's the biggest change probably I know Bears, you were saying he felt like it nerfed bot lane a little bit too, right? I mean, and yeah, just, for, just his <laughs> weird way of playing bot lane. Okay, for Blitzcrank, yes, you shouldn't build tier. That's that's just messing around. But so Sona has what Sona mains on the subreddit call a tier tax, where basically you don't become a champion until you get your tier. And when it was 750, it still sucks to have to first back buy a mana item. But even just pushing it 100 gold, that's like six more casts of spell thieves because you can't get frostbang until you get your tier so each one has a cooldown of like 30 seconds i mean you're adding an extra couple minutes to your tier buy because you're not getting any cs and then for ezreal i know 
uh, a lot of people tend to back after you clear the first or second cannon wave, you have enough for tier as long as you're getting pretty well CS, but now you have to go all the way to the next cannon wave after just for the extra 100 gold. So I know it can impact like back timings and how to get your early game snowballing. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I, I don't know if... It, he it, it already sucked for Ezreal anyway because when Ezreal backed to get the tier, he was already a disadvantage coming back to lane because he's not picking up a damage item, so it obviously it just makes it a little, little worse. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think he's suffering too too poorly from it from it i was looking at analytics earlier and everyone's i i'm pretty happy right now looking at like win rates across the board because like the, all the mages are roughly sitting around 49 50 percent and all the marksmen are roughly within the same uh territory well i think there's a new as build where you get your muramana and then you build sarah yeah afterwards that one is <clears throat> it's not afterwards you what you do is you build mirror mana then you pick up your trinity force iceborne gauntlet split of the ruin king whatever you're going to build second um and then you're going to pick up after you've built one or two items after the tier then you pick up another tier and then you go into seraphs with it and that's because his abilities like w and q have ap scaling ratios on them and they help to have um and seraphs basically seraphs is the divide between that third and fourth item lull that Ezreal has because it's kind of uh, uh, widely known that after you you know you finish your mirror mana your iceborne gauntlet slash trinity force there's not and blade of the ruin king there's not really anything Ezreal can buy like how many times have you been there and you kind of go well I could get a BF or a BT or an I edge but they don't really help me all that ton I'm a fan of a late game dusk blade on Ezreal honestly <laughs> <laughs> but that's just me. It helps you, like, if you get the jump on another ADC, you can one-shot him really quickly. But Mura, uh, going Seraphs is definitely going to be better all around. Yeah, the Seraphs build makes him actually feel like he scales like an AD carry, so it's pretty nice. You don't feel like you're useless late game just pinging takes for 200 damage once they build armor. And it should change. That's why a lot of these things I kind of hold my breath, because patch 6.11... The mar everything marksman is getting completely flipped on. Yeah, its head. all the marksmen are going yeah. to be terrible. <laughs> I I don't know about going to terrible. I, I'm I'm cautiously optimistic. I because I really like the idea of Last Whisper going to full armor penetration rather than bonus. That helps assassins so much. They're going to just one shot people like they did when it used to be the flat armor pen instead of the bonus. It just reduces like all the armor the AD carry has and they don't build any anyways, so. And that's why Jin starts coming <laughs> back, because Jin was wrecking, rolling over fools when he had flat armor penetration as well, because his four shot crits. Yeah, I think the caster AD carries will be a lot stronger, and it looks like people are talking about more of, like, a Bork into Storm Razor, I think that's a new item, rather than, like, because mm -hmm. crit AD carries will take so long to get started, you pretty much need Infinity Edge, double crit, and Last Whisper before you'll do anything. Right. Yeah. The, well, have you, the, the, uh, patch. Sorry, Vrail, Patch six eleven. The I think the the accepted community uh, outlook is that, like you were saying, crit eighty carries won't be good until three or four items, and then everybody else who isn't a crit eighty carry, uh, or is some kind of like spell caster, you know, spell weaver, whatever you want to call them, is go are going to dominate because it's going to all be about early yeah. eighty carries now. Yeah, lethality gen will probably come back. I think, which I, I think, think you so. still play, Adam. Yeah. But. I do. I think Storm or whatever the one is it Storm yeah, Razor the one that gives Storm you Razor Surge. I think that's gonna be really good on Jin because that basically gives you fifty percent crit because you have your first auto is automatically a crit and then your fourth auto, and if unless it's like an extended team fight, you're generally only gonna get one rotation of autos in. Mm -hmm. So I think that could be pretty solid on him, like double maybe double lethality into Storm Razor. Something to look at. Yeah, I gotta spend some more time looking at it and and really think about it. I do think that like Lucian is gonna start popping right back up to the Lucian top. with the new Essence Reaver is going to be ridiculous. Where you ult and then all of your cooldowns are reduced by like I don't remember the exact time, but all of your cooldowns after you ult get reduced every time you auto. So you like E auto Q auto W auto E auto Q auto W auto. It's just ridiculous. Is that the is Storm Razor is the one where you use your ultimate and then you? No, that's that's Essence Reaver. Oh, that's Storm Razor is uh, 
if you haven't autoed for like two seconds, you get a guaranteed crit. And then if you have a hundred percent crit, something else happens, but I don't remember what it was. I think if you're out of combat for two and a half seconds, yeah. then your next auto crits. And then it gives you like move speed also, I believe. I haven't really looked at it. I just know that's generally yeah. what it does. People were talking about how yeah, oh, sorry. Oh, no, yeah, people were talking about how strong that crit would be on like Rangar or Zed because if you walk up to a bush with Dusk Blade plus guaranteed crit, you're just going to one shot anybody. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that the new Infinity Edge, which is converts crit into true damage, is going to make Trindamir like insanely good. Because he already takes Conqueror, and then his crits are going to be doing true damage also. Yep. So you're just going to shred everything. Won't be able to itemize against them? No, not at all. Well, you know, speaking of itemization, we're going to eventually move into that tonight, because I have some information I want to talk about, about buying um, armor and health, etc. I'm actually going to pull that over here so I can have that. Oh. All right. Hold on. I'm sorry. The, the podcast is taking a quick break from um, learning how to talk properly so that I can set my scene up correctly. But uh, if anyone out there who just listened to us talk about patch 6.11 wants to know what we're talking about, just log into the client or go to the front page of like LeagueLegends.com. They've hosted a preview of what they're thinking about doing. And that should, be, that should actually be up on the PBE next cycle, right? Because we're going in the 6.10 right now. Um, yeah, I think so. I think those items might already be on the PBE. They are. I've seen videos with Evolution with at least the new Essence Reaver. So I don't know if all of it is, but some of it is. Okay. I need to update my PBE and go test it out. Yeah, same here. If I ever have the time. Okay. Find the time to do things, right? <laughs> you have enough trouble finding time to play on the, the actual patch. I can't imagine finding PBE time is going to be easy. <laughs> It's all settling down now. So, you know, congratulations to my wife today who passed the SLP Praxis. This so she can, uh, she's graduating with her master's in two months, and then she passed the big old test today that is that it basically allows her to do her job. It's the test the state, uh, United States go, says that uh, if you pass this, you can do the job. So, you know. Like the bar that, exam or the CPA, kind of like that? Yeah, exactly. Cool basically okay. that for for her pr profession and so uh you know i'm obviously i'm giving her a shout out here but i'm also saying that because now that that's over with and i don't have to deal with the constant studying and the constant classes and all that kind of stuff maybe i'll get some time to my <laughs> <laughs> uh, but and it doesn't help that i ran away to go play another game last night but that's not here or there all right let's talk about it i want to talk about uh unsealed spell book uh have you gotten you guys gotten to play around with that i've played with it once on um Swain and I didn't realize that you couldn't go straight back to a summer spell that you swapped out of. So I was like, yeah. "This is great." I I just went uh, flash <laughs> flash ghost. I was like, "I'm just gonna back early. I'll get my whatever item. I'll just TP back to lane. I'll still have both my summoners." But then you have to like use three other summoner spells before you can go back to TP, yeah. which I don't like at all. So then I couldn't TP. I don't ever think I got back to using TP. I don't think I used that many. It's not. It wasn't very intuitive for me when I should be activating it because you don't have a huge window, so you have to be real uh, intentional about switching to a summoner spell, and then you're gonna have to use it. I don't know exactly the time. It didn't feel super long, but I, it was not my favorite. I don't. I like the old one better. So you had a an amount of time that you had to use the swap summoner spell. Think yeah, think of Zoe's W. Yeah, kind it's like of, it's like where you seconds. pick something up and then it starts. Yeah, I don't know exactly how long it is, but I didn't love it. See, I when we were reading it, I got the impression that it was going to sit there forever. Like you could swap to TP, then sit and have the double summoner spell. But I suppose it's, it's not a terrible. I think some more time you play if you spent some more time playing with it, and you could use something like swapping to a TP as an impactful moment in the game that you know that turns it around that you might end up liking it i think you probably just have to go in having a better understanding of how it works after playing with it once well the problem is you have to so say you're split pushing against someone and you don't have tp as your primary one of your original two summoner spells if they go and channel their tp you have to wait get out of combat right switch to your summoner spell wait five seconds and then TP, wait the four seconds for TP to channel, and then you're going to be like 10 or 15 seconds behind the other person going to the right. fight. So if you're going to be a, playing a split pusher, you have to take TP as one of your primaries and then use the the other ones as to augment it rather than switching to TP late. Right. 
Yeah, probably. St- I can understand why you may not like it as much, and uh, I don't really see any use of it. Like I said, I don't really play anything that wouldn't want just to sit on the night all game. But uh, I, I, I just kind of get the idea of the theory crafting behind it, but it's probably not practical. One of those where it, it makes sense on paper, but the practicality of it never transfers over into game very well. I think it makes the most sense on junglers because you can just swap to... Um, you can just like rotate between ghost, exhaust, um, ignite, and then I think you should be able to go back to the other one. So then you'll just swap your smite to one of those, and it'll just help your ganks as you're going. But I don't think it makes a ton of sense on a laner. Maybe a um, support also, but because if you're playing jungle and you have unsealed, you can. I think it's six minutes when you get your first one. Like if you gank top and say you're Shaco and you already have ignite, and you just switch your smite to ignite and. Um, Exhaust, like that's a really hard to get away from that gank. All right, Bear's new strategy: Zyra bot lane. You don't need, see, you don't need Airy, and you don't need Comet because I mean, who cares about the extra little extra damage? Zyra bot lane with unsealed spellbook. You are now taking, you are now taking, you know, like Ignite or Exhaust as primary, but we're switching to Clarity at some point <laughs> just to give you some mana, <laughs> Ezreal, just to give us some more mana so we can continue to keep up the harass. I mean, I feel like you could possibly take it on a support if you went like maybe like a Rakan or a bard like someone that roams a lot you could start with ignite switch to tp you can all like i know bard or Rakan likes to switch to cleanse bard could maybe switch to exhaust and ghost it doesn't sound as useful but i mean it wouldn't be terrible i see i thought bard but i was like hey, probably electric cube yeah you like, don't want to get rid of that damage it's better on him I did see in a solo queue game, like the first day it was out, a TF that went flash TP, and then he would, at least his first gank, he switched to ghost and then ulted with his ghost, and that was pretty effective. Hmm. But I feel like that was the only time it was really very effective, and I'm sure you could find something else to use. The reason I think jungle is the way to go because you can be so intentional about switching to it, and you know you're the one who's setting the table to use the summoner spell. Like, because sure. you only have a certain amount of time, and you're like, I'm switching here. I have time to set everything up, so you're not gonna just possibly like, oh shoot, I just wasted that swap, and I have to wait like five minutes to get another yeah. one. Is is there a notification that goes out to the enemy team? Yeah, you? it tells them that you've switched, so you can't like sneak anything. I figured, but I just wanted to make sure. All right, well, that's Unsealed Spellbook. If you guys have been playing with it, let us know how you've been using it. Feedback at TrinityForcePodcast.com. We want to know. Well, you know, We're coming up with theory craft and some ideas, but uh, the few champions that you pro- we potentially may use it on, we don't really play. Like TF. I'm a terrible TF. I can't pick a card for the life of me. And if I play anybody else, I can use it. I can't CS. So. You just have to believe in yeah. the heart of the cards. Dude, so the old, our old Hearthstone podcast was called Hearth of the Cards. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> because of that it was awesome yeah all right i want to talk about this and i really don't know how much discussion we can have but i hope we can try to make something out of it before we jump into a couple of listener questions as we had a listener question come in that said should you or when should i buy armor over health vice versa magic resist over health etc so i went and dig some digging for the exact numbers to give you guys an idea what that is and uh i mean you guys can cheat and look at this so i can't really ask you but uh, do you guys know the the idea behind buying armor and health and magic resistant health basically i know the rule i know the rule of thumb now i just read it <laughs> <laughs> I, know, so I said without cheating but you're cheating so i looked through the show notes earlier so <laughs> i didn't know this was gonna be a pop quiz <laughs> oh wait till we do a trivia night it's gonna be fucking awesome <laughs> Braille, oh frail hasn't done a trivia night have you no oh, i never shit. have oh shit i gotta come up with one here so you get one on there anyway guys the rule of thumb out there right now is that well okay i'm gonna give you guys some idea with armor magic resist and health uh, essentially each point of resistance increases your effective health versus that type of damage by one percent of your maximum health uh this doesn't change no matter how much resist how many resistances you have uh to give you a better idea how that works uh, hp is a multiplier for your survivability of armor and magic and armor magic resist is another so uh, for example they sc- uh, they scale multipli- multiplicatively with each other um, like 100 armor makes your HP twice as big versus physical damage 200, 200 armor makes it three times and so on and so forth but so a good rule of thumb is at 50 armor you should have 1100 HP 
At 100 armor, you should have 1500 HP. At 150 armor, you should have 1900 HP. Essentially, the break points being 50, 100, 150. If you hit those, you should be buying HP up to a certain point to make it so that you've uh, leveled, you know, you've leveled out the amount of damage you're taking uh, compared to the amount of armor magic resist that you have. Okay. If you guys want, if, yeah, I know it's kind of it's one of those things where I don't know how much of a discussion to have, but I did want to answer that that question here. I mean, it makes sense. Like you, if you build all armor then you don't have much of a health pool to use with it. And if you build all health, then everything hits you like true damage, so. Yeah, I think it, it depends on what kind of comp you're playing and what champion, because if you're playing like Malphite or Rammus, you just want to build a lot of armor, and you don't need to have as much HP, because you get so much through your kit yeah. that it it like gives you so much more f just by building the base uh, resistance rather than well, the HP. But you, want, so you still need a healthy dose of both of them. Well, with, like, Rammus, because W gives him so much armor and a magic resist, buying health early is more impactful than buying armor. Now, granted, that's why Thornmail is so good on him as the first yeah. thing you get him, because it's giving you health and armor now. Yeah, back when Thornmail yeah. didn't give health, a lot of people wouldn't buy it just because it gave so much armor but nothing else. Yeah, you had yeah. to have did it used to just give, whatever. It gave, like, 100 yeah, flat. Yeah, it gave 100 yeah. flat, and it reflected damage instead of based on your armor. Right. Interesting. And and for people who gain a lot of life, like Cho'Gath, you should you don't because your R is giving you so much life, you don't really need to be buying life as long as you're holding onto stacks. And that's more doubly true now because uh, he doesn't lose stacks when he dies. And he, he only, oh. does he lose half stacks now? When he no, dies? He, no, he, he doesn't lose any. I remember that's playing right. old Cho'Gath and you would die. And it was just you would become a tiny oh, little right, dinosaur. Right. But yeah, because Cho'Gath gains life through his passive, you don't need to be buying so much uh, health on him. Or, you know, passive R, or active R, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Basically, building armor magic resist on Cho'Gath is more important than building health. Uh, and Malphite is another one of those offshoots. Malphite's W brings him to 40% bonus armor when you press it. Uh, so you just be buying a ton of health before armor, before level 12 on Malphite because you have W in your kit. And I know for champs with, like, shields, like, I remember reading this for Nautilus or Scion, like, those shields give you bonus health so you can afford to build more armor or magic resist because it'll effectively make your shield stronger. And then, like, Leona's the opposite and Ramus, where, like, they give you huge armor and MR buffs so you can build more health. Yeah, yeah then also, like, for the shield ones, getting CDRs super big because the more you have your shield yeah. the more HP you have basically until they make it so that shields don't mitigate damage based on your armor and magic resist like it's they need to make true damage to, when you hit somebody with shield you do true damage to the shield because right now damage is mitigated by your armor and magic resist when you have a shield on you that makes shield creep more powerful until they do that start building you know tons of but they tons have Aurelia he does, yeah. does everyone already forgot that she does 300% damage or something to shields when she has a yeah. passive the one person in the game <laughs> don't nerf my Jan on Lulu that make, leave me alone it makes no sense they've been slowly hitting sh uh, shields like they nerfed uh, Lock of the Iron Solari <laughs> and uh, Athene's getting nerfed as well as sort of a nerf to shields and then shield and heal power is slowly <laughs> going the way of the dodo slowly but and then they just nerf the champions over and over yes well at one point on the pve there was something like a shield emp they were looking at putting the game and i'm like that's a completely wrong way to fix <laughs> yeah, it let's just make some champions useless yeah make champions useless and make an item that everybody has yeah. to buy i think they should just make like a, a counterpart to grievous wounds where it's grievous wounds for shields and you have to choose which one you buy i think i've said this before where if you basically apply shield grievous wounds where the shields are like whatever 40%, 50% less effective on these champions, I think that'd be a good way to go about it. Because then you have to pick if you want to apply grievous wounds or if you want to apply healing re reduction or apply shield reduction. So I think that's a, a healthy way to go about nerfing it. It's an interesting way to go about nerfing it. I was going to bring this up for. I mean, not people. even nerfing it, just providing counterplay or at least a build path that can makes you feel like you can actually itemize against it the problem with that right is that you would have to make if you did that you don't have to make 
another item, but it would be helpful to make another item, like a second style of thorn mail that kills shields with people attacking you. Because right now thorn mail applies grievous wounds, and Morello applies grievous wounds, and executioner applies grievous wounds. So then you need to give you know that that shield ability to those other people who have a, a way to apply grievous wounds. But with that said, people would need to actually buy executioner's calling out of bottom lane, and they fucking don't and in Aram's no one builds executioner's calling like no one builds the fucking item and the item is so good that it's worth the 800 gold or so that you you know you spend on it early grizz wounds is huge especially when you're against someone like vladimir or soraka or nami it makes a huge difference or nami oh nami is my least favorite support to play against right now i don't know why i feel like she heals everyone's like level three i feel like she's healing half of a ad's health bar with one ability it's stupid Super strong, but super mana intensive. Yeah, too bad they nerfed uh, mana flow. Yeah, there. I hate it. I love the mana flow. Of course you do. The poor enchanter support hates that they nerfed his his, uh, his items and abilities. I'm so sorry. Why can't we just go back to the ardent meta? That was easily my favorite. <laughs> of course. Okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah. All right, well, we're going to tear, some, tear through a couple of listener questions because I'm going to put bears in the spot for the next 15 minutes. We're going to make this a little shorter of an episode. So I'm going to make you guys go for an hour on Wednesday. Well, Vrail won't be here, but we'll see what the fuck happens. Uh, Total Fats writes in, due to the changes of Heal and Ignite, would it make more sense for the sport to run we, heal? We, we've done this we one did before. this one. Bcat writes in, what is the best way to deal with problem teammates? Bcat, do I not have this updated? I swear to God. I think we've done this one too. <laughs> Yeah, I did. And if I didn't be cat, I wrote to you. And if I didn't answer your question, I apologize. Have we done that one? No, we didn't do naked bull rats. I mean, we've done it. We, see, the thing is, we get so many of these questions. This is why we need to do another fact episode, right? All right, I'm just going to write out here to Asher. Asher writes, I've been playing boring tanks and bruisers top lately. However, after Kaisa came out, I've been slowly moving to playing her a lot. I like her top, but I perform pretty well as a marksman, especially when I do with my sport main friend. However, she's the only marksman I enjoy playing. If she gets banned or picked, I won't feel good on the role. Should I keep practicing her for marksman, a role which is most alien to me, or should I stick with what I know? See, I feel like we did. I'm not trying to be dick, but I think we did this one also because I think we told him if you're going to switch to ADC, you should find another ADC you should be able did to play we? also. See, that's the thing. Did we do this one, or am I just... See, all right, fine. Fuck we it. Need, we need Dom to fix all this for us. God damn I'm it. I'm going to go and fix... I'm going to take these all out. So I'm going to do it. All right, total fats, B-Cat, and everybody else. Man, we need some questions. I thought we had them, and we don't. All right, here we go. We're going to answer this one. All vision. When should I buy elixirs? When I want a mid-game power spike to snowball lead to try and make it back into the game if I'm behind? Only as a seventh item in the late game. Okay, so I buy elixirs when I feel... I don't ever buy them super early. I buy them when I feel like if I have enough gold for them and I think the next fight might be the last fight of the game because then you want the extra um, combat stats. But I, well, you should obviously be getting it as a seventh item. Like Once you have nothing else to buy, you should always have an elixir on. But if I back and I like have the choice between getting an amp tome and an elixir... And I think that the next fight will probably decide the game. I'll buy an elixir and just let it sit in my inventory until we are about to fight, and then I'll turn it on. That's how I go about it, anyway. Yeah, my answer is pretty similar. Like, if we're walking into... I've already sitting on three, maybe four items, and I've backed, and I have enough gold to buy the elixir, but nothing else but maybe a vision ward. I'll go ahead and fill my slot with that vision more than buy an elixir because I think a big fight's coming up because I have an idea that Baron's spawning soon, Dragon's spawning soon, and I want that little extra oomph to get me to where it needs to be. So the the best way to answer that question is definitely after three, four items and when a big, you know, big fight's going to happen. Because if you buy it and then nothing happens with it, you just threw away 500 gold. So you don't want to buy them early because 500 gold early is like can be detrimental really, really hard. Yeah, you're so. setting yourself too far behind by pick, by purchasing something that leads to nothing. Because if you were to purchase that item at 10 minutes and then go back to lane and even get a kill with it, uh, essentially you are up zero gold. You're down 200 gold still. You would have to get a double kill, and then you've only netted net 100 gold for that double kill. When in real, you know you could have spent that 500 gold or so on a BF sword or something else, a tome, amplifying tome, or whatever it is, and use that to help snowball the lead. So really, it's better when you can, you know, uh, multiplicatively, multi. I can't even say the fucking word. Uh, increase the amount of AD or AP you have, or etc. 
Multiplicatively. I don't Look at that school. fancy word. SAT word, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Anything to add, Bears? You good? Uh, I don't ever get to buy elixirs because I'm a poor support man and I buy like three pinks every time I back, so I have no idea. <laughs> All right, it's the, he's buying the pink wards, placing them down on the map, so, yeah. no, so people, we can get vision, so nobody can look. I at did it. like what you said though, and I have noticed people don't do this, but streamers always say to, and it is smart. If you can buy like a long sword, or you can buy a pink ward, buy the pink ward because vision is more important than that like 10 AD. I mean, I'm talking like more in the mid game. Like if you have three items and you have one slot open, don't buy the long sword, don't buy the elixir. Don't buy the dagger. Buy a pink ward, please. Help your support. Yeah, we we've talked to Ad Nauseam. Sounds like a support main. I'm gonna buy the. I'm gonna buy the long sword. Hate you. I haven't checked. I need to start paying attention to Vrails. See, the thing is, for a long time there with the guys at the podcast, I'd always pay attention to how much people ward, so I can give them shit while we're on the show. Like, uh, people know Sean. I always give him shit because he never buys red wards. Well, the thing is, I haven't paid attention to Beaver, Marine, or Vrail for the amount of red wards or wards they drop at all. So, really, we need to start playing together again so I can start looking at the end of game stats <laughs> and, and figure out if you are actually buying red wards or not. Because you right I'll now, draw, you can, you can, can tell pull me. Pull it up are. on op.gg and it'll literally tell you right there. Oh, shit. It's right. It will. Wow, well, let's go, Vrail. I don't know if I should say that, but. If you look me up, I guarantee there. you I have them. Place like 15 to 20 a game. <laughs> Vrail, when I look you up on OPGG, am I not looking? At, I'm looking. The at L is an I. It says, the L is an I. The L is an I. Yeah. Oh, uh, you are Vray, huh? Oh dear, I've got three games where I didn't buy one. Uh oh. Jesus. All right, let's look. Oh, he doesn't have any ranked solo games. That's right. Arrow, oh, this is arrow, all a bunch arrow, of arrow, twisted arrow. tree line. That's uh, right. Normal, normal. Let's see here. Wait, where does it show it? It used to show it on there, didn't it? Oh, yeah, wait. Okay, here's... Well, I was playing Teemo, so I had my shrooms. I was playing ADC, so I didn't have to buy them because I'm ADC. I was shitting no, on my opponent. I was shitting on my opponent this game, and it was really early, but I got one. <laughs> and Flex Series doesn't have any Flex Series. All right, I'm going to keep I'm gonna keep a track. I'm making a spreadsheet for now. <laughs> happening. I normally have at least one, I'm which is not good enough, but... One month. All right. Look at this, look. Alistar, 11 control wars. Look at you. Is that... I think I played that game with you. When I play support, I normally buy a shit ton. <laughs> I don't. I, I run around the map and buy really, really aggressive <laughs> items, like uh, playing Blitzcrank and building a tier. That's, that is the <laughs> meta build right there. You build five tiers and Swifties, and you just run around the map. Yeah, fuck yeah. It, it, my marksman. I, I, yeah, the last time I think I played, I played when I played Bard, and I think I left my bottom lane alone for 10 minutes. I just fucking went around the map. We lost the game because I left my bottom lane alone. But hey, I, I get bored. That sounds, that sounds right. very familiar. <laughs> yeah, I wonder where that came from. Five kill Bard can't fucking do anything with it. <laughs> All right, Dogs writes in, I've been playing jungle sport for a while now, but I was mainly playing tanks, so my mechanics are pretty weak. I'd like to pick up laning to improve that. What champions or roles would you recommend? I'm looking for something that's beginner-friendly, but would have enough mechanical expression so I could see my improvement. Beginner champ. I feel like Jax is easy to be okay on, but you can get really good at him because he's auto-attack based. And But there's some nuance to his kit that you can, like the auto-attack resetting and going on, and when you have your third hit with your... Um, ultimate passive, so I think he's easy, but can show. If you play Jax, good at him. don't telegraph your E. Like, the something that Sean taught me a long time ago with Jax was, a lot of, bad, the bad, you can separate bad Jax players from really good Jax players, because bad Jax players will engage with their E into a team fight, and good Jax players will jump in and then press E to mitigate, actually use it to mitigate damage. Then this, and for the most part, it's still the same goes for top lane. Um, as well with Jax, is you can empower Q by pressing W. You don't have to press it mid air; you can press W then Q. But that also helps get that extra damage off when you're in the yeah. Top but lane. I like using W for an auto attack reset. It depends on what you're gonna do. Like I know Jax's strongest trade is where you build up your third. Uh, hit up your ult and you just jump with your W and the third hit up and it's just a big chunk yep exactly that then if they try to fight you you press yeah. E and then you make them dodge everything 
and you just walk away slowly. Yeah, or but uh, don't under you can do the level level one all in with Jax's E. That's, yeah, sure. that's so it's strong. Very similar to Trindamir. You can get some people that way where they don't expect it, and you just build up your passive and then walk on them with your Eon, and you can get a really good trade level one. Yeah, I'd say as much as I don't want to throw you top lane, I'd say top lane is probably the best place to move into because you can pick up bruisers. Uh, Renekton would be a decent one to play because he he does force all ins and he, he forces in and outs through uh, slice and dice as well as he has really good trades between uh, W and then you have to learn how to the mechanics the mechanics between slice and dice and using your pass or excuse me your rage properly uh, makes Renekton a pretty decent foe uh, I say I wouldn't recommend like Trindamir or anybody out of the top lane Volibear depending on your elo might not be bad either because you have to stack up your passive your auto attack uh, w passive before you get into a team before you get into a fight so you can get the extra damage I feel like Tri swings. Trindamir if you can learn his rough early game then I feel like Trindamir could be good to learn just because he scales like a monster and most people really struggle to deal with split pushing so you can win a lot of games just by keeping all the lanes pushed and no one being able to 1v1 you but he has some real it's he can get in some big trouble early if you're not careful because right. Like, he wins level 1 a lot, but then he he can struggle until he gets his ultimate. What about Wukong? Uh, I like Wukong. I think Wukong Wukong's a hard to lane champion, though. You think so? I don't think he's got to be that bad. I mean, that, with, like I said yesterday, the extra range on Q allows you to do quite a lot of funky shit. It does. I just feel like he loses so many matchups. Like, you can't duel Darius. You can't duel Fiora. You can't duel Jax. You can't really duel Nar. Feel, well, the, the, it's tough to duel people when you don't have any CC. Like, he yeah. only has... He can go in and then he can clone out, but he doesn't actually have any CC until he has And he doesn't build tanky, so, so if you jump in, you're pretty much just forced into a fight that you normally lose. He's really good at roaming, though. I know a lot of Wukong mains, they'll, like, never... You just sit top till you're six, and then you just roam all game. That makes sense. Use your alt, go back farm, use your alt, yeah. back farm, etc. And he, he one hits people like game. Oh, yeah. like the ADC oh, yeah. support. So well, he's got armor shred on Q two, yeah. doesn't he? I think so, but I think you just get uh Dusk Blade and once you have enough A D you just jump in alt uh, Q and then they just die with electrocute. Gotcha. I say another another decent a lot of those top laners, um, if you're looking for McKe there there's some bruisers. Just look at bruisers, right? Like mechanically skilled. Camille can be pretty she can be hard to play, but she can also be pretty easy depending on the elo. Uh, Fiora is another one that you can take a look at. Some people might say don't try her, but she forces you to make be you know make decisions of where you need to be positioned in lane based on where her passive procs and forcing her passive proc in the right directions. Um, plus, the mechanically skilled comes how quickly you can press W before getting a stun to you know get the parry off. Uh, I, I just don't know your specific skill level but it goes for anybody out there if you're looking for a champion to play and you're trying to improve pick up something uh, in your elo that others may not have necessarily seen and that are extreme that aren't extremely mechanically intensive like I legitimately think Volibear is a good top laner right now for anybody who is bronze silver and mid gold because well, he, let, he lets you do really stupid trades and win yeah, his uh his buff giving him the knockback is huge. He makes him so much more of a um well rounded champion that he is I can see him having a lot of success top lane because he gets so tanky and then when you proc your passive, it can be incredibly hard to one v one him at all. And his bite does sneaky trade uh sneaky damage in early trades. Yeah. I'm gonna make uh Marine answer this next one right here, this James one. Proxy farming? Yes. Well, the last time I played Singed, do not go. It's real it. hard to figure out when to do it. <laughs> I have no idea. I was like 1 in 10. I had like 10 CS a minute, but I was I was feed. I mean, that's just was that's just good. playing Singed, though. <laughs> kind of, but I, I don't think I was... I wasn't being as productive. I feel like I should have been. We lost, so that had something to do with it, but not great. 
these other questions i mean we can keep answering them but i don't want to answer too many listener questions i'm trying to keep i'm trying to keep the number of down and i'm trying to come up with some better ideas for us to talk about in the podcast um i feel like this one a little weaker early but we did discuss some of the the follow-up stuff hopefully we have some good discussion coming down on wednesday because i'm 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 leaving it to you guys first time dom isn't here wednesday's rolling around uh second podcast of the week and then uh you know frail's not here to carry everybody yeah i've got finals on friday on uh thursday and friday i probably should do some studying at some point yeah good luck with that (laughs) anybody i need need all the luck i can get (laughs) Before I push this near the end, does anyone else have anything else uh, to add, or, or you know, kind of throwing out there? Now is your time. If you had, a, if you soapbox about something, you something you pissed off about, whatever. Okay, there's one thing where when we talked about uh, elixirs and how you can, like, if you don't get anything from it, it runs out and then you just wasted gold. Mm-hmm. So I've had like four games this week where we lost a fight. We had like two people up and they were five manning Baron, and there was an Infernal Drake just sitting there. And instead of going and getting the Infernal Drake, my stupid-ass teammates went up to him and just died to them instead of going to get the Infernal Drake. And this is what I always say. I say, dude, they have Baron buff for three minutes, but Infernal Drake is for the whole game. So just go get the freaking Infernal Drake if you clearly cannot contest Baron. Sure. Go get the go get the freaking Drake because that's for the whole game. And when you said, uh, when you, said you don't get everything out of the Elixirs, that made me think of that. I, it's just something that has frustrated me this, uh, this uh, recent... Uh, week. Well, see, that's and that's what I've been noticing a lot is that w- playing down like this season, I have to start at gold one. So I've been I've been playing a few solo queue games here and there. Um, and that a lot of the a lot of the players around the gold area, or whatever, are actually good in when it comes to lane. A lot of people have some pretty good lane mechanics. They play that well. But when it comes to playing the macro game, they don't have an understanding. That's where it completely falls apart. The game snowballs out of control because nobody's playing the macro. They're just playing for the first ten minutes of of the entire game. And if people would switch their mentality to playing that Infernal Drake, the Towers, etc., I think they would have uh, more success. Hell, the games might even be more fun for players because there'd be more, you know, mind games and more to do than sit in the mid lane. I completely agree. I feel like there are so many players that are so focused on their mechanics. It's like, I know for a fact I did not get to plat one by being mechanically gifted at all. I probably play worse than like many gold laners. It's all about just like knowing what to do and doing it. Yeah, yeah. there's a hundred hundred resources out there. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll, we'll wrap back around here. Maybe that's the thing. I think that's what I'll leave you guys leave for Wednesday is have them talk about more of the macro style play and how to really capitalize on that because I touched on it this evening, but without having the notes in front of me. I don't feel like I can do the conversa- the excuse me the conversation very much justice. Um, so well, the like the way I would say I'm not also not a very good laner, but Bears and I would duo <laughs> and he would play Rakan and I would play Velkaz, and we would just survive laning phase and then we would just team fight and yep. win. So because we had, were on comms together, so we knew when we could win team fights. Because I don't know if you know this, Velkaz Rakan is nasty in team fights. Yeah, like, and so you can just like set picks people don't expect. Like you just sit in a bush. And wait for people to walk up and just one shot them. Like that works for a lots of different yeah. combinations. People never expect you to be bush camping. Never. Yeah, that what that was yesterday. This is that what you said. You said you did expect me to shoot the arrow, and then suddenly that villain is there, and I'm like, yeah, oh, oh, fuck. yeah, that definitely happened. That happened to me twice. <laughs> Like, like that was like two or three times Evelyn was just like, I'm in a bush and I'm standing right here at a place where I should be standing, but here yeah. I am, right? Well, it's Evelyn. She can be standing right next to you. It doesn't have to be in a bush. She can, she can be yeah. lane camping. It doesn't matter. Can't fucking see her. It's so annoying. I hate invisibility. I hate Evelyn. Same. All right. Well, I'm going to leave this uh, this piss poor show to rest. I'm going to lay this piss poor show to rest. I blame it all on you guys for the terrible ending and the, the petering out. No, I'm just fucking with you all. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going with that. Bears, thank you so much for joining again. Uh, you guys will hear more of him as the episodes go forward. Yeah, thanks for having me. And uh, he'll never, he'll no longer say thanks for having me as he is going to be a member of the oh, yeah. show. And uh, he and I are going to play further together. And then eventually he's going to realize that uh, I'm, I'm terrible at this game. And he's going to wonder why the fuck he's playing bottom lane. <laughs> but stay tuned for that one in the future to be continued. Guys, that's episode 533 of the Trinity Force podcast. We will see you all on Wednesday. Peace. <laughs> Later.
Thanks for listening to our product and being a member of the Trinity Force Network community. If you have a moment, please head over to iTunes and give your favorite show a comment and a rating. If you're so inclined, you can check out all of the other great shows in the network. We've got a wide variety of content from League of Legends to general gaming and role-playing podcasts. If you'd like to follow us on social media, we can be found on Twitter, Facebook, and Reddit under T-Force Network. We've also got a Patreon under that name where you can support your favorite shows with a small donation each month. Thanks again for listening, and we hope you continue to enjoy all of our podcasts, videos, and the community that we've provided. 